Well, last time I came at you, we were talking ice fishing. Uh, we're going to talk open water now. I know it is uh, March 10th, but I'll tell you what, I'm looking outside. It's beautiful out. It's supposed to be in the 60s in the next three days. Uh, boats are coming out. People are getting on the water. Lakes are opening up. There are open water opportunities right now, which I have not said, I don't know, ever in my lifetime on March 10th. So my thought let's get after it let's talk crappies we can't target game fish here in minnesota as all of you should know uh, bass season's closed to walleyes pike muskies all that good stuff but we can chase crappies bluegills you can chase catfish if you have catfish in your area or in your body of water but i'm going to focus primarily here on panfish and i'm going to talk about what i'm going to be using here what i'm going to be using to catch some of these fish uh, what they should be doing uh, just kind of my uh, precursor here to the immediate early early open water season so i got three setups here and i have a fourth one that i have rigged up as well i'm going to talk about these three and then my fourth one and i'm, I'm saving the fourth one because i'll explain why and that kind of ties into what we just did the last a uh, few months here um called ice fishing that setup continues to play here uh, so for starters, let's just jump right into that one. We'll, we'll jump with the fourth one first, and, and that's really an ice fishing approach to open water fishing. I'm holding a drop kick jig from Clam Outdoors, and I'm doing that because I think a lot of us as open water anglers, especially when the crappie season hits, we throw all of our ice fishing stuff to the side and we focus just on bigger stuff. And that can sometimes work, don't get me wrong, but I have found more often than not when the water temps are still in the low 40s, and teetering in that level and we have nights in the 20s and 30s and a little bit of skim here and there that they want what we fed them during the ice fishing season and that's the size 10 size 8 drop kicks the Mackie plastics uh, make sure you're using four pound test line you're really finesse fishing now I'm not necessarily using an ice fishing rod now if I can get away with an ice fishing rod over the side of the boat it can be a whole lot of fun but I'm using my traditional open water setup i'm using the longer rods the seven foot ultralights from light action i'm using uh, the four pound test line i'm using the 1000 series shimano's which i'll show you here on some of these setups i'm just really downsizing my offering i'm not fishing the 30 second ounce or 16 ounce jig heads uh, i'm not always using the bigger plastics i am using some of the smaller stuff still to get bit so don't neglect the ice fishing gear bring a little jig box with you of your favorite tungsten ice jigs and your favorite finesse ice plastics, maybe even a bait puck of maggots, you never know because some days that's just what they want. That's what they were just biting on as little as last week through the ice. So that can definitely work. So that's just a quick tip. Um, don't forget some of the ice fishing stuff as one of your go-to setups, especially these first couple weeks of open water. Um, so on to what my more traditional open water applications and setups are gonna be for my next stuff. Again, we got two months, two months until we can fish for anything but panfish, which for me, call me a dork, is actually kind of exciting. I love the springtime crappies. So I'm gonna show you my three setups. I'm excited for these next two months. I'm gonna get after it. I'm gonna hopefully catch some fish, try some new bodies of water, uh, hone in some of those crappie skills. Probably have a couple fish fries. I love this time of year because the bite's usually pretty good. You can get on a number of different fish and crappies, the tug is the drug. If you balance appropriately, light ultralight rods four pound line catching crappies is a whole lot of fun so i'm going to start things off here uh, first and foremost probably the first thing i'm going to pick up if i'm not doing the ice fishing approach is going to be a hair jig uh, my kids uh, jack and brody um, make these hair jigs for me they're actually super super cool get uh, that one untangled there this one just happens to be a 164th ounce jig head. This is a VMC jig head. Uh, I forget the exact name of it. Flat side, couple eyes, pretty cool jig head. And they're just tying on some of that hackle or chicken hair or bucktail or whatever they find. I have not done a ton with marabou. Marabou can work. I just like how this disperses more in the water column, but that's just gonna be a small profile jig head. And when that thing mats down, it just kind of tightens up, looks almost like a pin minnow in the water. And I'm fishing that underneath. A good old trusty you can see that now rocket bobber i'm using the smallest size which i think is their ultralight they have an ultralight then a panfish i believe the ultralight's the one i'm using the smallest one and you might notice i'm not using any weight between the jig and the bobber i want that thing just to 
come right down into the strike zone, and then I'm slowly just working that bobber back to the boat, watching for that any subtle movement of that rocket bobber to tip up. As we know, that's what indicates the bite. So I find hair being a very, very, very effective way to catch panfish right away. And honestly, I'll use hair um, throughout much of this next month or two because it's very durable. I can just catch more fish on it. And I'm not rebaiting. I'm not doing any of that stuff. So I'll be fishing hair. Um, this is going to be a seven foot ultralight. Actually, this is, I think is a seven six. Don't quote me on that. Let me check. I forget. Uh, seven two, seven two ultralight rod built by Thorn Brothers. I got four pound test amount of filament. I got a 1000 series Shimano and away we go. Super, super fun setup for crappies and bluegills. Probably my one of my all time favorites. And my good buddy Lonnie Murphy actually, if I can't see it, painted a crappie on this one for me. This is a wonderful setup. So 7.2 Ultralight, that one works well. Uh, my next setup is not gonna have a bobber. I'm gonna fish a 132nd ounce. So I'm going just a little bit heavier on the jig head, not a ton, a 132nd ounce drop TG with a tube. And I go to a tube because a tube fishes a little slower than let's say your pin minnow, a little slower than some of your minnows type baits. So switch to, uh, to that and that seems to get bit pretty well this time of year because a slower profile, but I'm fan casting with this. I'm not relying on a bobber. I am pitching, I'm covering water. This might be outside weed line, basin fish, whatever it might be still. I'm paying attention to my electronics and my forward facing sonar for schools of fish. I'm pitching through them and it seems to get a bit. Now on the setup of this, I am using uh, a five pound or eight pound Fireline crystal or a, or a micro braid of some kind, and then I am putting on a four pound fluorocarbon or monofilament leader. I like that because there's no stretch, a lot of sensitivity, great on the hook set. So I am using braid to fluoro mono setup for this. I have better success with that, and this tungsten jig works exceptionally well. Looks great on forward facing sonar. I can really scope or find these fish and pitch at them. I can also get down there, use a smaller presentation, but fish heavier, which can oftentimes be key. One of the advantages of tungsten is smaller but heavier. So 132nd ounce drop TG, your favorite tube. This is the Try Alive from Mr. Twister. I actually love this color. The red, pink, and white is very deadly. Catch a lot of fish on this. And my setup for this is I do have an ultra, I have a light, my bad, a light action rod, seven foot light action rod built at the, with the squad at Thorn Brothers. And again, 1000 series Shimano. This thing is wonderful for pitching and casting and covering a whole lot of water. Um, very, very, very effective. So that's setup number two. And my third setup, which I think is often neglected by the hardcore guys and gals because we like to think we can always catch them on hair and plastics, right? Uh, I'll tell you what, sometimes you just got to feed them minnow. And I know a lot of you out there use minnows for crappies, no doubt about it. Probably still the most preferred way by most anglers is crappies. So I just have a plain Jane thin wire red hook one split shot, weighted bobber, slip bobber. I can adjust that wherever I want and I can get done on the crappie minnow scenario if that's what it takes. I'm using a longer rod. I'm using a seven, six light action rod. I can uh, pitch this. I can pick up more line, especially if I'm gonna set the hook using a bobber. Um, it's a little, not as easy as tight lining, let's say with a rocket bobber where the line or the bobber doesn't slip or I'm just actually fan casting. So. That longer rod gives me a little more power on the hook set. Uh, again, I'm using four pound test line. I got a 1000 series Stratic CI4 on here and away we go. But I have seen this time of year, you just can't forget about it, is just feed them what they want and that could be a live minnow. So this time of year, I am having uh, oftentimes bringing a scoop of live minnows with me. Uh, much of the year after this cold front or cold period, uh, the next week or two, you might not ever see a minnow on my boat again unless I'm going uh, walleye fishing this summer. So the first couple of weeks, I do oftentimes think about a scoop of crappie minnows in a bucket. I will be honest, 90% of the time they never get touched, but the 10% of the time that you need them, that is usually all that works. So a three or $4 scoop of crappie minnows and a little bucket of water in the back corner of your boat, out of sight, out of mind in case you need it, sometimes can save the day and that's the setup. And if I get somebody in my boat that might not be as experienced or they might wanna just kinda of soak in the moment and enjoy the day, Really, really tough to beat a small little crappie minnow on a plain hook to catch a whole bunch of fish. So those are my three main setups. We also talked about the ice fishing rig. Don't forget that, bring that with you. Water temps right now, not even gonna talk about it. They're barely, barely above making ice. So we're uh, teetering into the low 40s 
we're not seeing anything funky at like 50s, stagey, none of that stuff. You're probably gonna have to start thinking or continue thinking ice mode on where these fish are located. They're not up in the boat channels and all that good stuff yet. Uh, but you can catch them. I'm, they're gonna be on the weed lines, they're gonna be in the basin, you're gonna see them with your, your, your electronics and you're gonna have to chase them down. They will bite just like they did through the ice a week or so ago, just like that late ice activity. Uh, they'll bite in the boat too, so get out there, have some fun. Uh, dress appropriately. One thing I'm gonna always have on this time of year is my soft shell bibs and my soft shell jacket. I'm wearing the Blackfish Gale top, the uh, Storm Skin bibs. I love that combination. It works wonders. Throw a stocking cap on, no shame in your game. You know, I have a pair of gloves on. The air gloves and Blackfish are great to use this time of year. Comfortable, maneuverability, waterproof, all that good stuff. So uh, dress comfortably. It's deceiving. Even if it's gonna be 50 degrees outside, that water's cold, the wind comes off it. Trust me. I'm probably preaching to the choir. It feels a lot colder than you think. So I always tell my kids, my clients, bundle up, shed a layer if you have to, but you can't put it on if you don't have it. So that's my, my tips right now. As we get out and do more fishing, I'll report back with some of the things that are working and what's happening. I'm going to get back at, at it with the weekly fishing report every Sunday, probably starting here in a couple weeks. Maybe probably wait till the end of the month as I get a few weeks under my belt to see kind of what's cooking. Otherwise, I'll, I'll report back with some other tips of, tips of the trade. But uh, that's what I know. Looking forward to a great open water season. Blessing in disguise. It's March 10th. We can drop the boat in the water. We can go fishing. Get out there. Have some fun. Be safe and enjoy your March open water fishing if that's the route you choose to take. And let's have a great open water season.